Hey guys, today I'm reading Becoming Bay Ruth by Matt Tavares. Becoming Bay Ruth by Matt Tavares. Tavares, I don't know. He's or her name. Baltimore, 1902. George Ruth lives with his parents and his baby sister in a tiny apartment above a saloon. Most days he skips school. That's bad. And roams the. Most days he skips school and roams the streets. That's bad. He steals tomato from a vegetable stand and throws them at passing wagons. That's bad. He sneaks into the saloon and takes money from the register. That's bad. Finally, when he is seven years old. His parents decide enough is enough. And I think it's going to be something good. On June 13th, 1902, George stands with his father outside St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys. Tears well up in George's eyes. He squeezes his father's hand and begs him for one more chance, but it's too late. That's why he deserves, he really, really deserves that because I am, for now. Well, I don't like, whatever, St. Mary's. St. Mary's is a school, not a prison. But the 800 boys who lived there called themselves inmates. Every day, the inmates wake up at 6 o'clock sharp. They wash, get dressed, go to church, then hurry to the cafeteria. They eat breakfast in complete silence. If they talk, they might get whipped. They eat the same food every day. They go to class, they go to work, they, they, they follow the rules. George does not like following rules, and he does not like going to class. He misses his parents and his baby sister, but there is one thing that he does like in about St. Mary's. Almost every day after all his work is done, George gets to play bas- b- b- baseball. One cloudy afternoon, George is playing ball in a little yard where the younger kids play, when someone in the big yard shouts, Brother Matthias is going to hit! The game stops. George grabs his glove and runs after the other boys. Brother Matthias jogs past the crowd. With quick pigeon-toed strides, he stands at home play and tosses a baseball into the air. Then hold then holding the bat with just one hand, he takes a gigantic uppercut swing high above the big yard, over the outfield beyond the trees. He repeats this magnificent act again and again. George pushes his way to the front. He has never seen anything like this. And I don't hate him. I only hate him when he, the days he was doing that. Like those bad things. Years pass, and after a while, St. Mary starts to feel like home. George has lots of friends. He works in the tailor shop and becomes an expert shirt maker. He plays in 200 ball games a year, even in winter, even when he has to shovel snow off the base bath base paths. Brother Matthias spends countless hours teaching George how to throw a curveball, how to turn a double play, how to pick off a runner at first. George learns how to play, catch a short stop, and every other position on the field. He practices and practices. By the time he is 16, George is the biggest, strongest boy at St. Mary's and the best player ball player too he he strolls to to to, to, to the plate the pitcher whirls around back up 
He yells to his outfielders. They're already running. Someone in the outfield yells, "George is going to hit!" The younger boys run from the little yard to watch. The pitcher wins up. George takes a gigantic uppercut swing and sends the ball soaring high above the big yard, way over the outfield beyond the trees. The boys watch in amazement. George circles the bases with quick pigeon-toed strides. I guess I didn't say that because whatever. One day, one day George hits three home runs in a game. Another day, he strikes out twenty-two batters. As soon as the game ends, still in his baseball uniform, he joins the school band in the bleachers and pounds away on a big bass drum. Crowds of people come to watch him play. They tell their friends about him, and their friends tell their friends. Soon, the word 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 spreads all the way to Jack Dunn, the owner of the minor league Baltimore Orioles. <coughs> On February fourteenth, nineteen fourteen, Mister Dunn. Goes to St. Mary's and watches George pitch for thirty minutes. He offers him a contract right then and there, right then and there. Two weeks later, George says goodbye to his friends. Brother Matthias shakes his hand. You make it, George. He says. He opens the gate and George walks out. Outside the gate, everything is new. George gets to ride on a train. He gets to stay in a hotel. He gets to eat dinner at a restaurant. Where do they, where do they get this kid? One of his teammates asks. Teammates asks. Um, he's one of Jack Dunn's new babes. Another teammate replies. After that, they all start calling him Babe. Soon, even the newspapers are calling George by his new name. Beirut. The the season starts and Beirut is one of the Orioles' best pitchers. Some days he plays for the Orioles in the afternoon, then rides his bike to St. Mary's and spends the evening playing ball with his friends. He plays so well that halfway into the season, the Orioles sell his contract to the Boston Red Sox. On July tenth, nineteen fourteen, he boards a northbound train on his way to the major leagues. Before long, Babe Ruth is the best best be, be, best pitcher in baseball. In nineteen sixteen, he leads the league with a one point seventy five earned run average. What this? In nineteen seventeen, he wins twenty four games. His team wins the the World Series three times. Nineteen fifteen, nineteen sixteen, and nineteen eighteen. In nineteen nineteen. In nineteen nineteen, the 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 Red Sox switch Babe Ruth. To the outfield to keep his powerful bat in the lineup every day. With his grand grand upper cut swing, he launches home run after home run he, high into the right field bleachers. Back at St. Mary's, brother Matthias and the boys read about him in the newspaper every day. On January fifth, nineteen twenty, they are shocked by the front page news. Babe, Babe, Babe Ruth has been sold to the New York Yan- Yan- Yankees for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, the largest sum any team has ever paid for a baseball player. Babe Ruth arrives in New York City in the spring of nineteen twenty, and be and quickly becomes the biggest celebrity in the biggest city in America. 
A flock of newspaper writers follows him everywhere he goes. He wears a fa- he wears fancy clothes, custom tailored, tailored just for him. He drives fast cars and throws wild parties. He eats enormous amounts of food. He does whatever he wants. And he. And he clobbers the baseball like anybody, like nobody ever has. Halfway into his first season as a New York Yankee, he has already broken baseball singer season single season home run record. All across America, baseball fans are mesmerized. They have never seen anything like it. Everywhere he goes. People cheer for him. Newspapers write, 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 newspaper writers make up nicknames, new new nicknames for him: the Batterer, the Col- 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 Colossus, and the Sultan of Swat. But there is bad news from Baltimore. A fire has swept through St. Mary's Industrial School for boys. Nearly every building has been destroyed. Babe Ruth has an idea. He writes a letter to Brother Matthias. <clears throat> On September eighth, nineteen twenty, Brother Matthias opens the gates, and fifty inmates walk out, carrying tuba trumpets, trombones, and a big bass drum. For the final two weeks of the nineteen twenty baseball season, the school band from St. Mary's gets to join the New York Yankees on a road trip across America. They get to ride on a train as special guest of Babe Ruth. He invites them all to the dining car and buys everybody ice cream. The 50 boys from St. Mary's get to go to all the games. They play a concert in the stands before each before each game and another concert every night. Babe Ruth is at every show. Huge crowds attend the concerts, eager to meet the babe in person and happy to donate money to help rebuild the place where the Sultana Swat learned how to play baseball. Back in New York, Babe Ruth strolls toward the plate. He sees Brother Matthew sitting in the grandstand with the boys from St. Mary's. He waves and tips his cap. The boys' faces beam with pride. Years later, Brother Matthias is playing ball with a group of boys in the little yard. Outside the newly rebuilt dormitory, someone in the outfield yells, He is here! The game stops, and all the boys run to the big yard as fast as they can. George tosses a baseball up in the air and takes a gigantic uppercut swing that sends the ball soaring high above the big yard past the outfield, Beyond the trees, the boys cheer with delight as he repeats this magnificent, magnific, ma- magnificent act again and again. So that's what I'm gonna finish today. Bye, guys.